Welcome to Johns Hopkins Medicine online webinar series. Today, Johns Hopkins leading experts, Becky Ryan, Daniel Wetzel, April Cario, and Elizabeth Gordon from the Department of Radiology will explore the process and policies of our CT program. Before we get started, we'd like to provide some user tips so that you are comfortable using this platform. The first part of our program will include an informative presentation by our presenters, followed by our live Q&A session. To submit a question, type it into the Q&A box and click send. Your questions will be seen by others watching this presentation, so please note, if you do not want your name attached to your question, check send anonymously. We will do our best to answer all the questions we receive during the Q&A session. Alternatively, you can email us questions and feedback at ctprogram at jhmi.edu. Please note this program is being recorded and we would greatly appreciate receiving your feedback and ask that you complete our survey. A pop-up window will appear at the end of our program with the survey. And now we would like to begin our presentation. Hello everyone, my name is Becky Ryan. I'm the CT Clinical and Operations Manager. And I'm joined today by Daniel Wetzel. He's our CT program director, April Cario, our CT technical educator for JHI, Johns Hopkins Medical Imaging, and Elizabeth Gordon, one of our CT technologists. I'm gonna start a little bit about the background of CT at Johns Hopkins. So um, in 1974, Johns Hopkins acquired one of the first CT scanners in Maryland and performed about 937 CT scans on that. So as you can see the picture on the right, there's been a little evolution since 1992 to current day. Uh, things look a little different. So now, current day, Johns Hopkins has 13 CT scanners in locations across Maryland, and we perform about 85,000 CT scans yearly. We have inpatient and outpatient sites equipped with cutting edge technology and software. So we have a wide range of scanners. Um, there's a picture there of one of our scanners in our rooms at our downtown location. Our CT program provides full-time pay while training for advanced certification in this fast-paced modality. Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Wetzel. I am the CT technical educator at the Johns Hopkins Hospital and the program director for our CT program here. Um, our upcoming program will run through from July of this year through the end of December. Um, and on that note, your classes typically end just before Thanksgiving. So the last several weeks of the program will be dedicated strictly to your clinical rotations. Um, the program does come with a $10,000 sign-on bonus as well as full-time pay and full-time benefits, um, which would include health insurance, PTO, and any other benefits that are applicable to any full-time employee here at the hospital. There is also no tuition, so there is no cost to you. Um, however, with the $10,000 sign-on bonus and the free tuition, that does come with a two-year work commitment. Um, and that two-year work commitment begins on your first day of work after the program ends. Um, when you are in the program, there are also no weekend or overnight shifts, um, along with no holiday hours or on-call shifts. Um, so you will be working um, a variety of hours during the daytime, and those hours could end up being a little bit into the evening as well. Um, but typically, in an eight-hour block, your, your general working hours will be somewhere between 6.30 a.m. and 9 p.m. And then after the program ends, um, you're really promoted to a full-time CT technologist, um, and your shift could vary at that point um, uh, aside from your standard five-day work week. Um, so we have other options available um, that could include 10 hour shifts, 12 hour shifts and things like that um, after the program ends. Um, our program does combine classroom hours and clinical training time. Your classroom hours are typically on Thursdays from eight to 4.30. And then anytime that you are not in class, you would be expected to be in your clinical rotation on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, at the end of the program, you will be um, well prepared to sit for your ARRT boards in CT. Um, our program is approved for continuing education credits by ASRT. Um, currently, ARRT states that you have to have a minimum of 16 continuing education credits, um, and our program has always been approved for well beyond the minimum requirements, so we have no concerns that any of our students will be well prepared to sit for their ARRT boards. Um, so far, 100% of our graduates have passed ARRT certification, um, 
you know, so again, you will, you will be well prepared to, to sit for your boards um, as you advance your career here. Um, and then after the program ends, you have plenty of opportunities to work full time at Johns Hopkins um, when you are no longer an intern. Um, you will be rotating through all of our clinical areas, um, which include our, our outpatient areas, both general outpatient and oncology outpatient, our inpatient areas, which would include our ICUs and our pediatric department, um, as well as our emergency department. Um, so you will have exposure to a wide variety of patient populations um, and really have an opportunity to experience that as an intern and then an opportunity to work in any one of those areas after the program ends as well. Um, and then our senior staff and our leadership is generally promoted from within the department. Um, so we like to point that out um, so that you have a, an opportunity and recognize that there's a lot of opportunity for growth within the department um, you know, after the program ends here. Hi, I'm April Cario. I am the JHMI um, educator. I'm just gonna to talk to you briefly about some things that you can do once you graduate from the program. Our techs have multiple opportunities to make their voice, make an impact and have their voice heard. There are quality improvement committees that look at workflows and processes throughout the institution for improvement. There is the Radiology Community Service Council, which goes out into the community and does different events um, to help support our community here. And there's also future mentorship, there's future leaders, there's one-on-one -on -one mentorship opportunities. And then you have your dedicated tech educators, Dan and I, um, that will help support you through your skill set and growth. Me and Dan also teach in the program the classes alongside the technologists that have graduated from the program that work here at Hopkins. If you're interested and you wanna hear from our techs, you can scan the QR code here and hear one of the techs describe her work here at Johns Hopkins and what sets us apart at Johns Hopkins. And then these are just some of the locations that we have. We have four standalone outpatient sites, as well as the Bayview campus and then our downtown campus at Johns Hopkins Hospital, which also, as Dan already said, has two outpatient centers in at the hospital as well. I'll pass it over to Liza. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Gordon. I am a CT technologist at the downtown Johns Hopkins Center. I graduated from the CT internship program in December of 2023. Coming to Baltimore was a little scary for me because I am from rural Missouri, and I didn't realize at the time how vibrant the life was in Baltimore. There's a great mix of attractions, and we're near a lot of uh, metro areas like DC and Philadelphia, which are just a quick drive or train ride. We also have a lot of attract attractions here in Baltimore, like restaurants, and we have both the stadiums for the Ravens and the Orioles. A lot of these places also offer discounts to Johns Hopkins employees that I've personally taken advantage of. Another great thing about Baltimore is there's a lot of like little cities within the city, including Fells Point, Canton, Federal Hill, Inner Harbor, which is where I live, Mount Vernon, and Hampton. The really great thing about all these places is uh, most of them you can walk to very quickly and on the way you can stop at cute coffee shops, cute restaurants, or even just sit on a bench and enjoy all of like the harbor and sailing views. As for next steps, we are currently accepting applications for our next program that will begin this July. Um, if you are interested in applying, you can visit our Hopkins Medicine website um, and the requisition ID 648289 will take you directly to the application um, to submit for the CT internship. Um, at this point, I do also want to stress that we encourage both current radiography students or current experienced x-ray technologists to apply to the program. Um, if you are a current radiography student, you can apply to the program without having your ART certification yet in radiography. Um, any offer that we would um, provide to you 
would be contingent upon you obtaining your ART certification and a state license from the state of Maryland by the start of the program. So it is perfectly fine for you to apply to the program if you have not yet sat for your ART boards in radiography, um, as long as you plan to do so before the July start date. Um, we are currently accepting those applications through April 4th. Um, and if you have any other questions that we have not addressed yet today, or if you think of any questions um, after this presentation ends today, um, you can certainly visit our website that is shown here on the screen, or you can send an email to ctprogram at jhmi.edu. Um, those emails will come directly to me, and then I will respond to you um, and try to answer any questions that you have um, after we leave here today. All right, we're going to move into our Q&A portion of the presentation. Again, if you have any questions, type it into the Q&A box and click send. Um, so first question, what does the first day of the program look like? Okay, great question. Um, first day of the program um, will be a lot of new employee orientation kind of things. Um, so we will kind of kick you off with um, a lot of um, information on policies, um, things that you would need to know about your benefits, um, and really just all of those orientation kind of things. Um, once you actually start into the program, um, you'll actually be in the clinical areas before you'll even be in class. Um, a lot of times the first few days are just short of what I would describe as shadow time where you're just kind of taking it all in. Um, but we will qu quickly have you in there being very hands on um, with patients. Um, usually one of the first steps is just sort of manipulating the table um, to position patients for their exam. Um, and then shortly after that, we'll move into a lot of information on contrast media, contrast injections. Um, and before you know it, you will be sitting there scanning live patients. Are you taking applications from current students who don't have x-ray certification yet? Yes. So we encourage um, applicants to apply if they are still currently in their radiography program. Um, you would just need to sit for your ART boards in radiography, um, have passed those boards, and then obtain a state license before the program starts in July. Um, so we oftentimes see applicants who will apply to the program now um, with an anticipated graduation date of May or June. Um, and as long as you plan to take your boards before the program starts in July, um, then that's fine. The offer would just be contingent upon you passing those boards before you can start the program here. How much travel is required while I'm in the program? Um, so most of our clinical areas are based here at the hospital. Um, so you would be rotating through our outpatient, inpatient, and emergency departments, which are all on the same campus here. There is some potential that you could rotate through our imaging sites as well. So as April said earlier, we have imaging sites at Green Spring Station um, and White Marsh. And I would say that both of those are within about 20 minutes of our East Baltimore campus. Um, we have a satellite campus in Columbia, which is a little bit further, but maybe within 30 to 40 minutes. Um, and then we also have a campus in Bethesda, which is even a little bit further than that, but still within about an hour of our East Baltimore campus. Um, but on that note, um, you would be rotating through your clinical areas in generally two week blocks. Um, so if you were to have to drive off campus to one of those other locations, it would only be for a short two week period. Um, and then you would rotate again through a different clinical area. Can I still work full time or part time while attending the program? I think that kind of depends on what your current situation would be. Um, when you are in the program, you are hired as a full-time 40 hour per week employee. Um, so I think it depends whatever is required for your other job, um, if that's what you're asking. So if, if you have a part-time job that you would still be working the weekends, then that could you know, potentially still work out in your situation. Uh, but just know that you would be working 40 hours per week, Monday through Friday um, as part of the internship. 
if you were to join the program and not take the sign-on bonus, are you allowed to complete the program and then move on to a different hospital in another state? Um, so with the sign-on bonus and um, the free tuition, you would have to sign a contract um, in order for those to apply. Um, if essentially you chose not to take the sign-on bonus or to not complete your two-year work commitment after the program ends, you would essentially be breaking the contract and then you would owe money back to the hospital. Do we get our benefits right away or is there a waiting period for health insurance? Everything comes right away. So you're hired as a full-time employee. So you're just like you were hired for any other full-time position. So your benefits and all those other things start right away at the start of um, your first day. Is there a certain number accepted into the program? So I think that varies. Um, we typically can take um, just depending on how many applicants we get. So we have four main um, kind of locations downtown that we rotate students through, but we can also do like a day and kind of like Dan was saying earlier into like the evening shift and kind of split that. And then um, we also use our satellite imaging locations like Dan talked about to rotate people through there. So we could take anywhere from a standard would be five to nine. So it's not like a 20 uh, student class, but um, usually a, a number around five to nine, just depending on the applicants. Do I have to take any prerequisites again before the program? No other prerequisites other than you just have to have your ART certification in radiography before you can start the program. Um, but if you're asking if you would need to take any other kind of A&P courses or medical terminology courses or anything like that, um, you do not need to take those um, as prerequisites again before the program. Um, and one thing that we did not mention earlier is that when you are in the program, your primary courses will be cross-sectional cross -sectional anatomy, um, CT protocols and procedures, and then CT physics. Um, so those will what we will be focusing on during your classroom time um, on Thursdays, um, but there are no other courses that you need to take as a prereq before the program begins. Do we have to buy textbooks for the program? Great question. And the answer is no, we will provide the textbooks for you. Do you need to have worked as a tech before applying for the program? You do not. Um, I can speak from experience on this is that I did not work as an x-ray tech before I entered the program. Um, so we oftentimes um, have a lot of new graduates who will transition, you know, as a radiography student directly into the CT program. So you do not need to have previous working experience as an x-ray technologist before this program. All righty, that was our last question. If anybody has any last minute questions they would like to add in the Q&A box, um, I'll give you a couple seconds to do so. Okay, well, I thank you for joining, and we encourage you to email questions and feedback to ctprogram at jhmi.edu. We appreciate your attention and questions today.